we are going to reach out to that person and buy them $150 groceries. Um, we're not doing this to brag or we're not doing this to be seen. This is something that the Lord has led me to do. Um, I was at God asking him, what can I do to give back? So many people do stuff to help me on this app. Those that know my story, those that know um, the call on my life. I quit my job and did full-time ministry right here on this app. So I do, um, I am very thankful for those. Exactly. Thank you, Rara. I am very thankful for those that do what they can to help, um, to help me to be able to, you know, continue to do something around my house without having a physical job only because the Lord told me not to. It's not like I just want to sit here because this, I'm going to tell you straight up, transparency, those that are called by God, they don't want to do it. A lot of people are not going to tell you this. Oh, you can't say that. Most people that are truly called by God, they don't want to do it. So watch out for those that's breaking their neck out here to try to preach and and, and do ministry. Um, those that are anxious to do ministry, you know, <laughs> sometimes that can come off as wanting to be seen. You know, when there's a real call on your life, you be running from it. You're not running to it. You be running from it and God be whooping your tail all up and through life until you, okay, God, okay, okay, okay. You know, that, that moment, I had that moment. So, you know, I listened to God. He told me to do certain things a certain way. And I did certain things a certain way. And God has been blessing uh, me and those attached to me, those around me. Um, not to be bigging up myself or anything, but some, just to tell, let you know, your obedience can help. It's for others as well, not just for you. When God wants you to do things, it's not, nine times a ten, it's not for you. God didn't want uh, Moses to lead the people to the promised land for, for Moses. It was for the people, and, you know, and, and Joshua was the one that ended up taking them over to the promised land. Moses got, you know, struck right. He got, he got, he got upset because the people wanted this from him and that and this and that. So he struck that rock and made water come out. <laughs> he could have just said water come out the rock, but, um, you know, he got frustrated, um, but, you know, it's not an easy thing. You know, it's not it's not something that we we want to run to and just, ooh, I can't wait till I start preaching. Ooh, I want to be a preacher. Woo, your lifestyle, a true preacher, a true minister, your life, you have to go through stuff to be able to reach those people. God allows you to go through certain things because it's for that demographic of people. Like, I can go to the hoods and talk to all of the Crips and Bloods because that's where I came from. I was a Crip. You know, and um, God protected me, kept me alive and, you know, the people around me and, you know, just things like that. Now my Crip and Blood friends, you know, they, they call me when they when things happen, when they, you know, they're going through something and things like that. They call me even if they believe in other things. I've had my Buddhist, one of my best friends is Buddhist. And, you know, something happened, some tragedy happened in his life and he called me, man, I need you to pray, man. You know, uh, Jesus, I need you to call hit, hit Jesus up for me, man, you know, because I'm trying to deal with this, you know, but. You never know why God allows you to go through the things you go through to bring you out until you actually go through the things and he bring you out. Then you then, then you get it like, oh, God saved me so I can reach back into the hood and save those that are in the streets and be able to mentor or talk to the young ones that are trying to go to the streets. You know, I have so many testimonies about, you know, life and, and running the streets and things like that and God bringing me out of it. But yeah, back on this... $150. You know what's interesting, Mom? I didn't even notice this until right now. You see it say $150 on here. I didn't even notice that. It says 150, 150th year anniversary for Animal Crackers. Um, but that is the amount that we give out to two families. But this month, we're doing one family. Then we're going to postpone it up into, back to May. I don't know why we're led to do that, but it was in my spirit to do so. And then, you know, my um, co-founder and right hand woman my mother dears right there uh, 150 dollars uh grocery giveaway coming up let's get right into this we're only doing one ticket one ticket this time y'all one ticket so this is a very special grocery giveaway on today because it's only one name whoever name is picked this is who needed this 
Amen. Then let's go. I will pick more names after so you will see that it's not just one name all on the same ticket, you know, that type of thing. You know, you never know what people think. They don't care if you do represent the Lord. They don't care if you do say you're a man of God or a woman of God. They still think you're cheating and slipping and sliding and doing something crazy. So, you know, I, I got to, you know, just to, just, to, just to shut the haters up. But here we go. Here we go, y'all. Here we go. Ah. I knew she was going to win, too. I don't know why I knew she was going to win. Dolores, Sister Dolores, I knew she was going to win. That is crazy. That's crazy. God been saying that lady name to me ever since she came back from that eye doctor thing, um, getting her eye surgery. Our winner is Dolores. She actually just joined the family too, y'all. Y'all can see that. Dolores. Dolores. So if somebody can reach out, she's in the family, mom. So all you got to do is just um, hit her up and let her know that she won. Um, now, when, we, when you win, whoever wins, all you do is go on walmart.com, grocery shop, buy your $150 worth of groceries, and then share your list to mom. Share your list to mom, and mom will take care of it, purchase it, and everything needs to be done on her end. So congratulations to Sister Dolores. That's very interesting because I knew she was going to win. I don't know why. I've been knowing this almost a week and a, two weeks now, two weeks. I'll, I'm like, that lady going, I don't know why she's going to win this grocery thing. And she sure did. I'm going to pick another name. Watch it be mom. Okay, I was wrong. It was Ron. <laughs> and I'm going to pick one more. Let's see. Watch it be mom. <laughs> it was mom. Mom, it was you. It was you. It really was you. But yeah, shout out Dolores. She is the winner of our grocery giveaway. Um, congratulations, sis. I'm pretty sure she's going to be real excited about that. Uh, I know I would, $150 in groceries. Um, that's a blessing. Yeah, so with that being said, I just want to read something real quick. Uh, <laughs> yeah, mom, you was elaborating, but y'all know me. I can't read. I can't even read my Miranda rights without preaching. So, you know, let me just try here. I just want to, you know, God gave me this scripture while I was in prayer. I just, as I was praying, he just kept saying, read Matthew chapter six, read Matthew chapter six, read. I'm like, okay, God, I hear you. I hear you. No, when you get out of the closet, as soon as you come out your closet, go right into reading it. So I did. And it was very interesting because, you know, it's just, it's just interesting because God blessed me on the back end. You know, and I even said to myself, I said this to myself when I got convicted in the scripture, I said, I be doing that sometimes. Like I'll talk about how. I, I remember one time I gave this analogy of if I throw a shield to 15 family members and 15 family members throw a shield back to me, they get one shield, I get 15. And that might look like I'm being greedy. But, you know, I did, I was doing this whole analogy to myself, like, man, you know, and, and when I, when I was doing that, God showed me, he said, that's you bragging about what you're doing anyways, right there. And the scripture teaches us about this, it says teaching about giving to the needy. First verse, I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. It says, watch out. Don't do your good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose your reward from the Father in heaven. Just that first verse blew my mind. Boom. That first verse blew my mind. It says, you will lose your reward from the Father in heaven. You know, sometimes, we, sometimes we'll be doing things and then... The blessing won't come. And it's according to how you're blessing. Like, say, for instance, you might throw, I'm, I'm going to use Beagle terminology. It's easier that way. You might throw 20 shields at me and then go run and tell somebody, I threw 20 shields at Elder Craft. And then when it's your time to come back around, you don't get nothing. Because you, you're telling your arms, you're doing your arms publicly to be seen. Look what I did. Look what I be doing. You know, and we have to be very careful when we give. When we give, we should be doing it out of our heart. We should be doing it because of the love we have for the person or to help them, not to be seen. So when I read that first verse, I was like, I've done this. I've, I done talked to mom privately like, mom, I'm throwing two and three shields on every family member. Every family member should be coming and throwing two and three shields on me. You know, saying little stuff like that. 
and not even realizing that I'm talking about my arms pub publicly, you know. And when I read that, God showed me you have to stop doing that. Because even when I when I heard that first verse, when after I read it, I looked like off into space and was like, "Wow, I'll be doing that, man." I'm sorry. I instantly apologized. Well, I'm sorry, God. I'm not trying to. I don't want to be seen. I, I'm trying to help, you know. And 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 later on that day, the uh, the account that we had for the grocery out the grocery giveaway had all of that money in it and instantly it just took me back to when i apologized to god about talking about what i do for people you know so i learned off of that i know the scripture but i didn't really pay attention to it like that or i wouldn't say i didn't pay attention to it like that i would say i got so caught up in giving and going and doing all of this and being and bragging about what i do i got so caught up in that that i forgot about the penalty from this scripture, the script, the penalty that this scripture tells you about, it says, watch out, don't do good deeds publicly to be admired by others, for you will lose your reward from your father in heaven. So God is, oh, you bragging about what you did? Well, I'm not about to give you nothing. You know, the Bible wants us to be a cheerful giver. When it's time to give, we should be running to go do it. Like, ooh, you know, ooh. Ron has this term he says about me, he calls it sharking because I'll pop up in the panel and just, so I won't even say nothing. I'll just come in and just start throwing gifts. God bless you and leave, you know, because I'm looking forward to people. Oh, so-and-so went live. Well, let me go in there while I got these beans, while I got these diamonds, while I got this, while I can help, let me go do it and get it out the way. I don't never look at my, the people and be like, ah, you know, but I did get caught up in looking at what I was doing for people. Um, that's why I did that. That's why I did that um, disclaimer before we did the grocery giveaway, you know, cause I don't want people to think this is something we want to be seen doing. I ask God, how can I give back? Um, I want to be, I want to be able to give something back, even if a person's not a host. And God said, he had me do it for six months. He said, take $300 of your money and throw it and, and, and split it in half. And thank, shout out um, Franny Mac. Cause Franny Mac was helping me with that other 150. I would do a 150 and Franny Mac would do the other 150 and we'll put it together and buy um, three hundred dollars in groceries for two different families. So that was our way of giving back. We're not trying to do it to be seen. Um, it was actually really a blessing. Those people needed. Everybody that's one needed it at that time. So to God be the glory. It says when you give to someone in need, do when you give to someone in need, don't do as the hypocrite as the hypocrites do, blowing a trumpet in the synagogue. All I mean and streets to call attention to their acts of charity hey everybody come i'm about to throw all of this money at this person hey everybody come i'm about to buy sister so-and-so a car come see me do this hey y'all look i'm about to give this to that person like that's what it said that's what the hypocrites the, the uh the um hip the um pharisees and the people in the synagogue the hypocrites did they blew a trumpet they wanted everybody to know that they were doing certain things for people that's why i like to shout out it's a few people i'm not gonna say names but there's a few people that be randomly cash apping me and you know and it's it crazy it always was i haven't got it lately but you know god is good at, but it's always been in those times where i'm like man I need this, but I don't want to ask nobody for nothing, you know, and that's, I'm sorry about the pride. It, it's been times where I've been really in the hole because Bigo, you know, I don't tell people what I get every month, you know, um, so sometimes it don't be what people would expect because they see it, they see five, 600 people in my room. They think I'm making all this money on this app, but it has been times where I'm like, man, God, I don't know how I'm going to get this. And I'll go to sleep and I'll wake up the next day and I got cash at. The, the money I needed for a bill and things like that. And I'm like, and it'll be from a family member. Sometimes it's not even from a family member. Um, you know, and I, every, it seems like I, I used to have my cash app right there where that um, YouTube thing is. And people will come in and see the cash app and randomly cash app two or $3, you know, little stuff like that. But it has happened ever since I took it down. I haven't really been seeing it happen, which I'm not tripping about, but I do want to shout out those that behind the scene gifters, those behind the scene, hey man, you know, the Lord has, you know, the Lord has touched me to do this. The Lord has called me, told me to do this. Do you have a cash app? Do you have any way I can, you know, so I thank God for those people because with their obedience to what God told them to do was able to help me in a jam that they didn't know about. Because one thing that we have to learn about is when we're, even when we're going through, 
You don't want to wear that on your countenance. You don't want to look sad or you don't want to look, you don't want to go around, I don't know how I'm going to get through this month. Uh, you don't want to be like that because, you know, God is going to work it out. So when we have that woe is me kind of, when we have that woe is me kind of continence on our face, we look stupid when God bless us. Oh man, whoa, man, glory to, you know, oh, thank you, God. We kind of, it makes us feel stupid instead of us just trusting God, you know, because God is the, our provider. When we don't get things that we wanted, it's because God didn't want us to have it at that moment. So, but God always looks out for his people. He, he even, the Bible says he reigns on the just as well as the unjust. So he even looks out for those that are not, that don't even believe in him. This is what's interesting. God looks out for those that don't even believe in him. Um, oh, wow. But yeah, let me get back into this, y'all. It says, when you do your alms, <laughs> it says, don't do as the hypocrites do, blowing trumpets in the synagogue and streets to call attention to their acts of charity. I tell you the truth. They have received all the reward they will ever get. You know what that reward is? Being known for the person that is doing that. Like say you, you go around doing charity acts and you're looking out for people and giving all these gifts and doing all these nice things for people. Your reward is being known as the gentleman or the lady that gives the gifts. So people, that's all your reward is. That person be looking out for people. You know, oh yeah, they notice me. Yeah, oh, yeah, they notice what I'm doing. That's the only reward you get when you're, when the, when you're blowing the trumpet to be seen for what you're doing. Do it because, it, the, the, do these acts of charity because they need to be done. Not so people can know or see that you do them because on the flip side of that too, people will take advantage of you. They know that you do this, so they come with a sob story every week, every day. Oh, I was wondering if you could help me out with twenty dollars to, you know. And they'll constantly do it. The next thing you know, you'll be a, you'll be frustrated, and that given spirit that you have will turn into a person, a spirit of a person that does not want to do anything because you get tired of people walking all over you. Um, but it says, it says, but when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. This means don't let everybody know what you're doing for people. Don't let the people around you, left hand, don't let the people close to you, don't let them know what you're doing for someone else. Just do it because it needs to be done or don't do it at all. It's better if you don't want to do it and you're just doing it to be seen, to be seen, it's better that you don't even do it because you're blocking your blessings. You're messing up your blessings by doing it. I'm going to just get this out the way because I don't want people saying I don't be doing stuff for them. Don't get caught up in that because you'll, you'll ruin your blessings. What people don't understand is God knows the continents of your heart. He knows what you're really doing it for. He knows, that's why, you know, just for instance, oh, I'm going to use Beagle again. For instance, me, I've been on this app two years and I don't, I don't do the business side of it. I'm truly a believe that God's going to do it type of person. I don't want to get caught up in the business side because then you get, you get tied up in all these, oh, I mean, let me get in because if I don't, then they're going to say I didn't get, and then you get caught up in that. And next thing you know, you're, you're a slave to the, to the trade. You know how they do the trades and stuff. You'll become a slave to that on here. If you, especially if you do ministry, that's another reason why I don't do it because I do ministry. Now, if I didn't do ministry, if I was just getting hours and stuff like that, then yeah, I would use my beans to, you know, do business. But God told me, he said, don't, if you don't, you won't be able to help your family if you outsource and do business with other people. So I just, even if they, even if the family can't help me back, my job is to do what God told me to do. But that's why I never really got caught up in the business side of Beagle, because I don't want to be a slave to owing somebody something because they came in there and threw a dragon on me or they came in there and I'm like, oh man, I, I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, thank you, sis. I didn't sign up for this. But yeah, so it says, it's don't let your right hand, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. I won't anyone tell you that you look like the singer case. No, <laughs> maybe because I've just cut my beard was a lot longer than this, <laughs> but I could see it. No, but um, yeah, so it says, it says when you do, when you do your, when you give to someone in need, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Give your gifts in private and God who sees everything will reward you. Like this is, man, I remember one time I was, it was early in the LOE, beginning of the LOE family. It's like everything I did, I was getting blessed. But do you know, I used to sit and wait 
for God to send me in the direct. Lord, I got $40. Who do you want me to get this $40 to? And I would sit there and wait for an answer. Like really would sit there and I'll hear God say, go to the gas station right now. Pay for everybody's gas in the line. All right. Take 80 bucks in the gas station. It'll be four people in the line. $20, $20, $20, $20. And people will come to me behind the scenes like, man, I was just at, I was just praying and trying to figure out how I was going to get through this uh, month. I mean, through this week for gas. I, I get paid at the end of this week, but I don't have the money for gas to get to work. And man, man, I appreciate that, brother. You know, and I'm not trying to harp on myself, but it's just the obedience of God saying, go pay for everybody's gas at this moment. Not knowing that somebody was just praying to God for help on their gas so they can get to work to receive their check that they need to pay some other bills and things like that. So that's the be that's the giving behind the scene. Like you're you're praying, Lord, who do you want me to help? Who do you want me to do? Who do you want me to be there for? Not doing it with a trumpet. Hey y'all, I got this hundred dollars. I need to give. Can y'all point me in the direction of somebody that need help? Not doing it that way. Because the people will see you do it and they will praise you instead of praising God. You know, because when you do it behind the scenes, you never know what that person was praying for. And when you do it behind the scenes, you be the answer that God gives them. You know, so that's why I tell us, don't let your left hand know what your right hand doing. When you do your arms, do it in private. And God who sees you will reward you. I want my reward from God. I don't want to be patted on the back or thumbs up because I'm so generous with my money. I'm, I don't want, uh, you know, I don't care about all of that. I want my reward from God because when God bless you, it's a sustaining blessing. It's a, when God opens doors, no man can shut them. The Bible tells us about that. So that's what I be wanting from God. So that's with that, that, that's just that little segment of teaching about giving to the needy, do it in private. Um, and a real quick, uh, testimony, it's not nothing major or anything like that, but this gentleman, me and my wife, was, we went grocery shopping today. And when we were putting the groceries in the back of the car, this homeless guy walked up to us. Aramis, can you go? Go. Thank you. Uh, me and my wife were putting groceries in the back of the car. And this homeless gentleman came up to us and said, um, I'm homeless. If you have anything, it will help. So I'm like. I, you know, I'm using a card. I'm like, I don't got no cash. Uh, and you're like, okay. I'm like, oh, but yeah, we, I do. It's some change. It was probably like two or three dollars in cold quarters, all in the side of the car. No shade. Car needs to be clean. So I'm like, oh yeah, it's some change in the side of the. Uh, it's some change in the uh, on the floor in the car. Hold on, sir. So when I'm turned to go get it, he gonna say, oh yeah, I'll take that as long as it's more than a dollar. Now, when he said that, flesh me. Could have been like now, not not no shade to my wife, but my wife was like, she was more so like I really wanted to not give him nothing because he put an amount. I said, me, I was being more jokingly about it, like wow, the homeless people they got amounts on what they want. I never in my heart never not wanted to give them whatever it was. Um, I did be joking though. I was like, I should get exactly ninety nine cents and give it to him and see what he say. But I didn't do that. I was just cracking a joke with my wife personally in the car. So I scooped as much change as I could, gave it to him. But it was in that moment when he said, if you, I'll take it as long as it's more than a dollar. Sometimes we as people will be like, oh, well, you ain't getting nothing then. You know what I'm saying? Well, since you, you know, and that ain't our job. I, I had to explain that to my wife. I said, it don't, I said it, 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 if that man asks for more than that, it don't, we just need to be cheerful givers and just give him what we got. Think about our cupboards. We have a roof over our head. We have food in there and our cabinets and things like that. Man, this change is nothing. So as I'm breaking this down to him, I gave, we gave him the change. Now me and my wife were standing behind the car talking about uh, this scripture. God gave me. I said, it's crazy. God gave me this scripture. When you do your alms, do it behind. Don't do it to be seen of man. I was explaining that to my wife. Like, we don't want to be seen by man to do it. We, the Bible tells us to be cheerful givers. We just give them. We, we blessed. So let's just give them what we got. And, you know, we just going back and forth about that. And then this, this older white lady just walked over there, walked up to our conversation and said, man, I really appreciate this. You guys are just like talking about God. Nobody's even paying attention to y'all. And it's just how you guys are talking about God and how about giving that it was, it was encouraging though. Cause she list, she's listening to me break down being a cheerful giver to my wife. And it encouraged that lady like, wow. Cause you know, people, when they talk about God, they be wanting to be seen and look, um, I'm this, I'm, my bishop is this person and I be doing this and I be doing that. And you know, we were just having a conversation amongst each other about giving to that homeless man. And I was explaining to her, like, it don't matter if that man said, give him $10. 
you know, our job is just to give. If we got the $10, give the $10. If we don't, we give him what we can. But, you know, I didn't let his amount bother me because if in my if I was in my flesh, I wouldn't have gave him nothing because it was the way he did it. He said, I'm, I'm a homeless person. Um, if you have anything, it will help. And I said, oh, we got some change in the car. Oh, I'll take that as long as it's more than a dollar. Now, I could have been like, but I didn't. I didn't even let it bother me. You know, I. Because I'm always on my P's and Q's trying to see where the devil is trying to destroy something or is trying to get me out of my character. So when I'm always on character watch like that and my my spirit is always on character watch about myself, you don't want to give off the wrong type of um, characteristics but by saying, and you're saying you're a man of God, but you're being mean to people or not helping the homeless and little things like that. So I caught it and gave that man as much change as I could. Um, but somebody, an uh, onlooker, uh, onlooker was watching me and my wife talk about this and what we were talking about encouraged her and she had to just take, you know, she came over there like, you know what, I just really wanted to appreciate you guys because it's just, you don't see people talking about God like this and how you guys are talking about giving to the needy. You're not doing it in front of nobody because it was nobody around us, but not, to, not, you know, it was somebody watching us, but we didn't know that she was watching us. So I was just saying that to say, you know, just do what God tells you to do because that little thing was enough to give that lady enough to go deeper in God. You know, now she's probably telling somebody, I've seen this couple and they gave a homeless person some money and then they had this little dialogue about helping the needy because they needed and not being seen. And I'm watching them the whole time and they didn't even know, but they did what the Bible said do. So, you know, all glory and honor to God for that.